Hey folks, today I'm diving into a comparison that I've been really excited about. The RX 9070 versus the 9070 XT. Now this isn't just a, a benchmark video, we already know that the XT is going to be faster, there's no shocker there. But I do want to talk about what each card brings to the table, who they're really for, and why I'd personally be happy with either of these particular cards in my system. So let's kick things off with a quick breakdown of the specs and the cards that I'm working with. Both the RX 9070 and the XT are based on the same 357mm squared Navi 48 GPU, a monolithic RDNA 4 chip with 64MB of Infinity Cache. Both these cards have 16GB of GDDR6 memory, running at over 20GB per second on a 256-bit memory bus, which gives each card over 644GB per second of memory bandwidth. But from there, the similarities end, and the personalities of each of these cards really starts to show. Now first up, let's talk about the Power Color Reaper RX 9070. This is what I'd call an entry-level version of the 9070. Not in performance, but in general build philosophy. It's a no-frills, reference-style MSRP card, everything that you need, and nothing that you don't. It's a true two-slot card, measuring in at 289mm long, with a clean and understated look. It's rated to 220 watts TDP, and that makes it ideal for simpler cooling setups. Being smaller, it's going to fit into more builds, it runs quiet and stays cool. Honestly, you're getting a lot of GPU for your money with this particular model. Now the XT version that I'm looking at today is the XFX Quicksilver Magnetic Air, and it leans hard into the more premium design category. You get the full 64 compute units of that Navi 48 GPU, which means more shaders, more RT cores, more tensor cores, and the support for higher power and clock speeds. Now physically, compared to the 9070 Reaper, this car is huge. It's 350mm long, it's a triple slot design, and it even comes with a GPU anti-sag stand in the box. And the cooler itself is seriously impressive. But the key thing for this magnetic air card is that it has toolless magnetic fans, which means that simply by pulling on them, you can remove the fans, clean them to your heart's content, and it's going to make maintenance of this card very easy going forward. There's also other niceties like removable magnetic faceplates, which you can buy from XFX or even 3D print yourself. It draws 304 watts out of the box, up to a maximum of about 340, but what it rewards you with is performance and silence. So while I said this is not a benchmark video, let's run through the usual test suite of games just to get a feeling for where these cards lie. Both these cards have been paired with the Ryzen 7 5700X3D and tested at 1440p and 1440p ultrawide. Assassin's Creed Mirage first and in ultra settings at 1440p, the XT is about 9% ahead of the 9070. And at ultrawide, the XT's extra compute and higher clocks it again kept frames higher and it was a very smooth experience overall, but it was the same for either card really. In Cyberpunk 2077, through all these tests, the XT had about a 13-15% to performance advantage. The extra RT cores helping a lot here, especially in the ray traced scenes. And, as expected, the XT maintained higher 1% lows across the full suite of tests. In Call of Duty Black Ops 6, this is where the gap really kind of stood out a bit. We were 20% faster on average and had 25% better 1% lows at ultra wide. So if you're into COD multiplayer or Warzone, the XD did give me a bit more consistency in those high stress moments. Conversely though, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, it was very close. There was only a 2-3% difference between the XT and the vanilla 9070. Now this one feels a bit more engine or CPU limited, but it's just something to note that there will be games that, depending on other factors in your setup, might mean that the difference between the XT and the vanilla is less than expected. Now finally Horizon Zero Dawn, and depending on the settings and resolutions used, we've seen between a 7 and 10% increase moving from the vanilla to the XT. So after running all these benchmarks, it's clear the RX 9070 XT it averages around 10% better performance than the standard 9070. 
but when you factor in pricing with the Reaper RX 970 costing 569 and the Quicksilver with magnetic air fans costing 699 that extra performance comes at about a 23% higher cost. So the real question here isn't which card is faster, it's more which one makes sense for you. If value is your top priority, then the RX 9070, especially in its entry level forms like the Reaper, is kind of a no brainer. It draws 220 watts, so it doesn't need a gigantic cooler, but still runs cool and quiet, and delivers fantastic results. Honestly, with this GPU's efficiency, even spending more on a higher end RX 9070, it just feels a little bit unnecessary. You're not really unlocking more performance, you're just adding bulk and cost for no real reason. With that said though, if you are chasing more raw power, or you're gaming at higher resolutions, then the 9070 XT is worth the look. But here's the thing, the XT does pull over 300 watts as standard, so it needs proper cooling, so I wouldn't recommend just going for an entry level XT either, especially considering many entry level XTs and vanilla 9070s share the same heatsink design. Now even if you don't go as premium as the magnetic air version I've got here, aim for something mid tier, with a solid triple fan setup to ensure decent cooling. You'll thank yourself later when your system stays cool and quiet under load. And hey, it's worth noting that if you like to tweak your hardware, both these cards offer solid overclocking and undervolting potential. So whether you're chasing extra frames or tuning for silence, there's room on both to fine tune them. But that's a rabbit hole for another video. So what's the takeaway? Well, whether you pick the 9070 or the XT version, there's no bad option here. The 9070 gives you excellent performance per pound, sleek designs and thermal efficiency that just works. And if you opt for the XT, especially in a more premium build, you're getting better long-term performance and a few quality of life upgrades that genuinely enhance your user experience. So it really just depends on what you are prioritizing and what kind of build you're putting together. Two great cards, two different strengths, but certainly the RX 9070 series is one solid lineup from AMD. But hey, I would love to know your thoughts on these two cards. Are you the kind of person that focuses on the raw performance value, or do you prefer some additional creature comforts? For now though, I'll just say thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.